私が話してるのは人間 Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Oscar Rich Trevor here. I'm joined by Sam, and、uh, we're reviewing a film. We're reviewing Monster by Hirokazu Koreeda, his latest film. I am a very, very big fan of his work,、uh, Shoplifters, obviously,、um, Afterlife, one of my favorites.、Um, this is his latest film. So I saw it at、uh, Chicago International Film Festival. I think it got a limited run in New York, is where you saw it.、Um, And、uh, yeah, I, I was really honestly kind of blown away by this.、Um, I, I was disappointed by Broker. Um, if I'm being honest,、uh, and that was really my first one of Koreda's works where I came into it already being like it was like a new Koreda film where I was like a Koreda fan coming in.、Mm. Um, and it didn't work for me as much, but this、um, just astonishing,、uh, just a fantastic adaptation.、Um, uh, like, really, really amazing. Really loved this one. Yeah, no, it was really good. It, I like to call Monster good close. Close is bad close.、Yes. Monster is good, close, yeah. Close, close. The Lucas Don't film, we are both that was one of our bonding moments. Um, is how much we didn't uh care for close because close is like it's it's dealing with similar things about like it just felt manipulative and right because like it's because I, I wouldn't necessarily, I mean, it isn't homoerotic because like it's it's children, right? And they aren't like you know really outwardly queer in any way, um, but it's like almost like like homosocial. In a way, yeah,、um, but also, but also, just peers questioning their sexuality and forcing exactly to conform to something. Yeah, it doesn't it, it necessarily have to be that... about their sexuality, but more so the perception of their sexuality by others and the pressure. Right, because because close very much dealt with like them, I guess, and it felt very internal, which is why I think like the manipulation kind of, and you know, if you've seen close, you know the turning point. If not, but yeah, there also are a、yeah. lot of shots in the beginning of that film that feel kind of sensual and intimate. Whereas in this movie, they don't really have that. Right. It's it's like, about the film is about the perception and it and it does that both like textually, but then also meta textually with the, like the entire framework of the film being about perception and about different perspectives on things, which I, I think very much、um, and kind of brilliantly like plays into、uh, like directly into the main thematic、um, point of the film, which is about the perception of these. You know, two young boys that are kind of questioning their sexuality, but it's it's like that thing where like you don't like you're questioning something that you don't even know if it exists in a way.、Um, right. Where you're you feel something you know kind of about yourself, but it's like there there's no way to even put that thing really into words.、Um, and it just becomes like kind of this this bond where you can feel between you and this other person that you're both feeling this thing that you don't really understand.、Um, And I, I really loved like almost like how it, it felt like a fantasy at points.、Um, yeah, I like how there's an ambiguity, especially towards the end, if something actually happened. Which we'll、not. get into. We'll get into spoilers、yeah. uh, at the end. But yeah, yeah, no, especially that.、Um, but even just like I don't know something about, and it's it's hard to pick up on like the specific like patterns of the dialogue and and how it was said. But it it everything felt. Um, in the way that it was spoken,、um, almost like it was, it was. I, can't, I don't know how to describe it, but like it was spoken ambiguously, if that makes sense.、Um, like I, I, all everything about like how it was described was like very much kind of stripped back、um, and, and, and intentionally left vague and, and left、uh, very easily able to be perceived differently when it switched perspectives,、um, because the film does use like Rashomon storytelling、uh, in a way, right? We're we're, we're using three. Different、um, perceptions, kind of, to to tell the same story, and then each one kind of builds on the last.、Mm -hmm. um, and I think that the way, like, the dialogue is left so open,、um, and the performances as well,、um, really nicely works with that. And just like the ideas of fire and water, and how it all starts with a fire, every single one connecting、um, uh, each each one of the stories of this, you know, this fire being put out. Um, and how that means something to all of them, and then the film ends with a massive rainstorm. Right, It, everything is drawing、um, kind of this this direct, like diametrically opposing ideas、um, with each individual thing. Like you have a, a a principal of a school who may have accidentally like killed her child. Right, everything is 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 so diametrically opposite of of itself. Which when things are so Opposed, it leaves so much space in the middle for there to be ambiguity. Like if if something、mm. is 
is so much of one thing than I, I, yeah, I, I don't know. It like, it's, it's a commentary on like people who are absolutists or people who have like right. very extreme perspectives on things. Yeah, which is just to consider those nuances that you can't really gather from those perspectives. Mm -hmm. And through that very distinct structure where it plays with perspective, it sort of gives the audience this outlet for them to sort of take a step back and understand the complexities of, you know, having absolutist viewpoints. Right. I, and I think I think the point that I was trying to get to is like it's like that that saying of like if you're friends with everybody, then you're friends to no one. Right. Mm -hmm. Like and I. I. I don't know. I mean, and I think that very much directly kind of plays into the the sexuality aspect because, like, uh, it was interesting. So at Chicago, I, I watched like the award screening of this after it won um, their like queer award, basically. Mm. Uh, and it was interesting going in with that context because if I didn't know if it was a right. queer film, I, I don't know how I would have read it, which I think is almost in a way kind of outside of the film playing with the same ideas as it is yeah. inside of the film and playing with my perception. It's almost like they didn't plan. watch the movie. They're forcing it to be a part of like the intelligible matrix. But instead, like the movie is so not trying to follow these yeah. like, practices. Because you want you want definition. You want, you know, oh, are they queer? Or are they not? Right? Yeah, uh, I mean, and as and just something in general, like as people, I yeah. wish we didn't live in a world where this existed. But the first thing that at least me and I know a lot of people when they see someone is what is their gender? How old are they? Like, right. We immediately place them in the those are just things that you think of, like whether or not you're criticizing or not. That's just what comes to your head when you see someone, mm -hmm. because it's easy to like put people into boxes and label them to understand who they are. And yeah. through this movie, it sort of, you know, again, it takes us back. You take a step back. You go back to childhood, a time where that wasn't really what you were thinking about and says, yeah oh, maybe this is actually how we should behave. This is how right. we should, you know, think of people. This because is how we children do don't else. inherently have that. Like, the, right. all these social constructs are learned. We, we and, and it's whether, like, and it's not learned even in the sense of, like, you're telling them, okay, this is what you're supposed to think about the world. Like, it's no. Like, children children are a lot smarter than we give them credit for. They perceive things in the world. They sense how other people are acting, how other people place others into boxes. And they begin to emulate because, you, as a child, you want validation. You want to fit in with what everybody else is doing. So you're going to kind of teach yourself all of these social constructs and force yourself into those. And uh, we're, we're going to get into spoilers. So if, if you haven't seen the yeah. film, you but quickly, quickly but... like also like, I don't know why we have to say that like adults are inherently smarter than children. Like maybe they've undergone more of an educate, a traditional like educational right. you know, life. But what if it's just different? Like, why does age have to be this sort of, measurement of quality when it's just sure. different right i mean it's it's really different perceptions and, and to get into spoilers so yeah click you know click away return whatever if, if you haven't seen the film yet but uh, the film kind of leaves on a note where did they die right it, we're, we're kind of left on this ambiguous note of you know did the children die did they live like we see them after the storm but yeah, it's all it, like it, it makes us question whether or not what we're seeing actually is happening. right because it's shot in this very like it's it's incredibly overexposed it's it's beautiful photography and like it's it's just it's so overexposed and it almost feels like an, an afterlife one of his other films um and it, it's i i don't know it, it's 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 left so open-ended and i really do think the point is that it doesn't matter it doesn't matter what the answer is and, and in that way it kind of thematically reminded me a lot of anatomy of a fall um in that sense yeah um uh which just another fantastic film from this year but like it really doesn't matter whether they survived or not because it just it's it feels like a a fable in a way um yeah about, no, there is something very angelic and like fable yeah about it. and like the, the the important thing is that they were happy like whether they died and were reborn and in lives where they could be happy because like i mean towards the end it gets quite dark where they like they don't you know, they, they begin to kind of like lose faith and they begin to talk about the end of the world. And it almost be like the, the massive storm at the end almost feels like they've brought it on themselves in, in a way, um, which is where, again, it has this like eerie uh, kind of tone and, and sensibility where it feels like a fantasy film in a sense of like they kind of created this, this storm within their own inner self um, because 
like nobody else would reach out to them because there's all these conflicting viewpoints between like the mom and the principal and the teacher. And in the end, it was just all a misunderstanding because they didn't really listen to the children um, who did know kind of the the truth and like the, I don't know, just like this this innocence of children of not placing things in the boxes. And and I think that's the how the film deals with like sexuality, right? Like sexuality is not definite. Is anybody really straight? Is anybody really gay? Like, you know, to do to to qualify people as straight or gay well then you have to qualify gender as a binary right and then okay well you know bisexual pansexual you're open to all people right but then are, are we how do you qualify gender how do you qualify you know what is what does it mean to be male what does it mean to be female that changes constantly over time it is all gender is a tool of personal expression so then how do you qualify sexuality under that like all of these things are, are invented social constructs because it's simply easier to describe ourselves and, and ascribe a label as one thing or another um, because it's it's easier for others and in our, in ourselves even to understand ourselves and to give ourselves a discernible identity through that. But in the end, it doesn't really matter. We're all just people that are expressing ourselves in slightly different ways. Everybody's sexuality is purely unique to them. Everybody's gender is purely unique to them um, because it's just we're just us. Um, and I love the way that the film, through the ideas of perception and playing with multiple different perceptions on on these children and on these events, plays so directly with those very ambiguous ideas. Like our identity is abstract. It is pointless to place labels on it. Mm-hmm. Going back to what you said about like the fable, like mm-hmm. aspect of the movie and how parts of the end feel cut quite eerie and, you know, fantastical. I think that also is due to the fact that, you know, Cora Ada wants you to feel like these boys. He wants you to be in their perspective. Mm-hmm. And when you're a kid, when something exciting happens, the emotion that you get from that is so intense. And same with yeah. when something disappointing happens. Like there's so much extremity to all of the situations that you undergo. And well, now, like you look back and you see those events as like they don't really matter. Like in the context of your life, they're not really important. Yeah. The things that you seem to care about, your reactions aren't as big, and you know nothing of that you know scale is remotely important. But by having it sort of told like a fantasy and this sort of fable like narrative, it gives you that perspective. It you know energizes and enthuses and brings to such a big level yeah. all of these littler moments that as a kid would matter so much to you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and and yeah, I mean, it's it's that really interesting thing of like how our memory functions, right? Mm -hmm. Like we don't choose what we remember. What we we actually remember in our life, it, it just happens right it's like when you laugh you don't choose to laugh at something laughing just happens and it's and it's we we can't explain it it's just something about our own personal experience in life it just it caused us to laugh at that specific thing we can't control it um and it's the same thing with memory we we can't control it it's something within our mind selects what we remember and what we remember changes over time and it's different based off of you know what we're as you say interested in at that moment and you know like there i could have been obsessed with something like there are so many things that i went through periods where i was obsessed with when i was uh, you know nine or ten years old right which i probably won't even remember now and isn't even in my memory now because it just it's irrelevant to me at this point but that was like the most important thing in the world to me at the time and that's kind of the beautiful thing with life is like you you it's almost like you're becoming a different person you know constantly and sometimes the old parts of yourself don't even matter. And, you know, maybe, maybe my parents remember that. Right. And, but their perception of it is going to be completely different than my own perception of it. Um, and you know, when we're both dead, right, we're it's going to have completely different perceptions of each other and our own selves. And uh, I just think that, I don't know how Coriata is just like, he, I don't know the way he articulates all of these massive ideas in such a quiet and subtle way. Yeah, um, he's not he's, really trying to like have you overthinking anything whatsoever. Watching yeah. one of his films as an experience is pretty chill. Yeah, it's it's pretty calming and serene, but then it, he he gives you the space of if you as an audience member want to engage with it. Mm-hmm. It can but take even discussing comedy. it, I don't feel intense and extreme. I still yeah. feel chill and yeah. Serious. But it's just it, it encourages so much really really interesting thought, I think. Yeah. Um yeah, uh, I think that's about all we we have to say. Yeah, I mean, watch it; it's it's great. It, it's absolutely brilliant. Yeah, if if you get the chance For to me, see it, it got better as it went on, and then the ending really packed a punch. Yeah, and I think the more you sit with it, and the more you talk about it with people, yeah. it's it's only going to grow for you. Sure. Um, yeah, really, really amazing film. Uh, arbitrary rating. I'm gonna give it a nine. Um, absolutely loved it. So I'll say eight. Cool, cool, cool. All right. 
well um uh I, if you want to know awards like who the fuck cares uh it didn't get selected for an international feature and that shouldn't stop you from watching it because it's one of the best movies of the year um so seek it out but those are our thoughts on monster we'll have more reviews coming soon uh gonna have stuff for perfect days the missing about dry grasses um lots of other great films that we're gonna highlight towards the end of the year but until then thank you for watching uh you can find links in the description to follow us on the social media if that's something you're interested in for whatever reason um but until next time i uh, think for watching stay safe and goodbye